I love it when folks reach out to me through the comment section on the videos. And this week I've had Sandeep reach out to me and ask me to do a video on passing parameters to tools within Alteryx. And so I've got a very simple example set up and I, I do emphasize the word simple. This is not a very complicated example, but it will show you how to use the interface tools. And so for this example, although I have Alteryx open right now, I've actually got my local installation of SQL Server on the screen here. And I'm using the AdventureWorks Data Warehouse 2017 version, which is available from the Microsoft website. Inside that database, there's a table called DIM Employee. And so I want to use that table as my example for this demonstration. And if I go ahead and just select some of the data from that table, one of the columns in this table is called Department Name. And so what I want to do is feed this table into my Alteryx workflow. But within that data set, I want to filter for the department name. And I'm going to use a text box to enter the department that I want in my final data set. All right, so I've showed you what it looks like inside SQL Server. Let's jump back over to Alteryx and kick off this workflow. So I'm going to go to the in-out palette. I do have my input tool favorited, as should you. So I'm going to drag that input tool onto my canvas, and I'm going to increase the canvas size so that you can see what this workflow looks like. I'm going to connect to that SQL Server database. And so to do that, we'll hit the down arrow on the input tool, choose data sources, and then we'll choose SQL Server Quick Connect. Now, as I mentioned, I have this particular database sitting on my local, my local box here, so I'm going to choose Local SQL. If you're connecting to a database in a, on a server, a remote server, you enter the address for that particular SQL server. I'm using Windows Authentication. I can test it to confirm that it works, and then I'm going to choose the AdventureWorks DW2017 database. All right, so we'll click OK. I'll get a little box that pops up here that lets me visually build this query. Of course, we could go to the SQL Server editor here and, uh, and type it manually, but I'm going to choose the AdventureWorks database. We'll expand the list size, and we'll choose DIM employee and drag and drop that onto the main section here. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of just selecting the table and clicking OK. You actually have to drag it onto the main window. And then choose, uh, if I can get the right one, I want dim employee, there we go. And hit the, uh, the star to select everything from the table. So it, it's emulating a select star statement. So we'll click OK. Uh, now I've got that particular data set queued up. We'll just bring a browse tool onto our canvas and then click Run. Now we can see exactly what I had within the SQL Server database here is uh, the department name listed. And I'm going to filter first for finance and then for marketing. So to do that, use the keyword filter. We're going to go over to the preparation tab and choose a filter tool. Drag that onto our canvas here. And then use the basic filter. So I'm going to say I want the department name to equal, and I'm going to enter the word selection. Okay, now this is just a placeholder term. There is no department name called selection. So if we were to run this workflow, it would always return the records on the false side of the output. I'm going to use my interface tool to replace the word selection with the word that I entered in the text box tool. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a little bit of room here. I'm going to drag my tools down a bit and we're going to go over to the interface palette. This is where all the magic is going to happen and I'm going to choose the tech, text box input. Now, as soon as I bring that close to the filter tool, Alteryx knows that those two tools can be connected together. But I'm not going to do that right here. I'm going to bring it back and disconnect it just so I can show you what it looks like. There is a little magnifying glass here, or at least what looks like one, but I'm going to connect it to the lightning input on that side. And when I do that, it automatically creates an action tool. Now there is an action tool on the interface palette, but doing it this way creates that interface connection automatically. Now there is a red warning symbol or a red error symbol on the action box because I need to configure it. But before I do that, I'm going to go to the text box and we're going to change the name that's presented to the user and we're going to enter department. So folks know what they should be entering uh, when this text box pops up. Now I can go to the action tool and configure this tool. When I select it, I'm going to expand the simple section, expand operands, and then choose operand value equals selection because this is the phrase that we're going to be replacing with our text box value. 
Now I click off the box, everything looks fine, I don't get any setup errors here. We're going to do two more things. One is I'm going to right click and add a browse after the false side of the filter. And then we're going to go to the input palette and choose an output data tool and drag that onto the canvas. What I want to do is output this data flows true side, the filter to true to a, an Excel file. So we'll choose Excel. I'm actually going to save it to a temp folder on my C drive, and I happen to already have one created because I tested this before we, we recorded it. So interface tool example, I'll save and I'll overwrite the existing file and we'll leave sheet one as the name that's going to be output. The only other change I'm going to make here is that I'm not going to create a new sheet. I'm going to overwrite the sheet that already exists. Of course, you may want to change that when you put this into production if you don't want your file overwritten every single time. Okay. From here, the whole setup looks good. Now, I could run this workflow, but I actually don't want to do that. Because I've dropped interface tools onto my palette, this is now an analytic app. So I need to click the magic wand and run it like an analytic app, okay? Now we're gonna do finance, and I'm gonna click finish. This is gonna run pretty quickly. When I click OK, the output of this workflow is going to be displayed. Now remember, it's an Excel file, so that means Excel is gonna open and load, and we can see if the filter actually worked correctly. If I go over to department name, you'll see that just finance records are selected. Now let's confirm that's not a fluke. Let's go back. We'll enter marketing this time. Instead of finance, we'll run this workflow again, click OK, Excel will load, and we'll see if the department name is marketing, and it is. Excellent. So we are confident that this is working the way that we want it to. All right. I'm going to pause there on the demo. Now, this, this demonstration is really just part one of two. I didn't want to label it as such because I wanted to answer the question the first time. But the second part to this would answer the question that I typically get, which is how do we select all records instead of just one? And to do that, you would create a duplicate data set. So you'd, you'd stream this data set after you've loaded it in and replace the department name column with the word all. All right, and that will be one of the options that you could enter inside the text box or select it from a drop down list. All right, now this will happen to double the size of your data set, but it does give you the ability to select all of them. Then you just union that data set that has all the records back together with the original data set that has the department name in different groups. All right, that's one question I get. The other question that I get is how do I do it if it's coming from a database and I want to have a drop down list? And I will cover that in a second video, but to do it, you basically create a lookup view and you use that lookup view that has the groupings in just the distinct uh, or unique values that you want in that drop down. That's how you would do it and feed that in. Now, of course, I'm going to do a second video on that so you can see what it looks like. The last question I get is about dates. And there is a way to choose dates and to filter on those. And in fact, in the interface palette itself, there's more than just text boxes. There's dates for having a calendar display. There's check boxes. There's file browse if you want to have the user select the data set that's brought into the Alteryx workflow. The key suggestion that I have for you, especially with working with dates, is making sure you get the format correct. Alteryx is very particular about the date format, and I encourage you to go to the Alteryx Academy and learn what that date format is. So if you're pulling in a different date format, make sure it's formatted correctly when you filter it out. So that's my recommendation there. All right, that's it. Stay tuned for part two of this, where we'll talk about doing a lookup and a select all.